Lord, I come into your gates with thanksgiving, and I enter your courts with highest praise. I contemplate all the things you've done in my life with gratitude both my hands i simply raise the highest praise the highest praise for the ways you've made my hands I simply raise the highest praise, the highest praise. With gratitude, I give to you the highest praise. You created me to show forth your glory. You redeemed me to restore my royalty. And now I live my life in anticipation for the day when I will live eternally. The high, yeah. The highest praise, the highest praise. With gratitude, I give to you the highest praise. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. I give to you the highest praise. With gratitude, I give to you the highest praise. Gratitude, I offer to you the highest praise.
love to tell the story of God's redemption plan. How Jesus died to take our sins away. But the finest words cannot express what one old rugged tree said best. For nailed to it was all God had to say. The cross said it all. The cross said it all. Without a word, God's heart was heard. And the cross said it all to prove his love like nothing else could. God used three nails and two pieces of wood and the cross said it all he could write it in the heavens he could spell it in the stars he could paint it across the sky for all to see but with his own life Jesus Christ said I love you with his life and forgiveness now resounds from
we can say amen. We want to thank Joyce Smith. She will be with us this summer at the Independence Church for our evangelistic meeting. I want to thank Dr. Joseph. He is a father in ministry to me. He is a much better thinker than I am. So I always pick up my phone and pick his brains. Because one famous author said, use all your brains and borrow as many as you can. So I'll borrow his sometime. I also want to thank my president, who also is a one of the favorite members of the Independence Church for extending this opportunity. And we want to thank my great members of the Independence Church, uh, second to none in the Lake Region Conference. We are having a marvelous Holy Ghost time. So if any, on any Sabbath morning, when you just want to hobnob with the Holy Ghost, our doors are open. But when you get through, you need to go back to your church. Is that all right? I don't intend to be long this evening. But if you get through before I do, Please wait on me. Let us pray, gracious Father. We give thee thanks this evening. And we stand in thy presence. And we ask that you will break us up. And pour your spirit within us. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Let everyone say Amen. When we open God's compendium library, the Bible, and we rivet our attention on the 13th chapter of the book of Numbers, we read in verse 1, and the Lord spake unto Moses saying the Lord who veils himself in majesty of sovereignty and dwells in resplendent glory engages in a live encounter with Moses Moses of whom one inspired and illuminated writer in a book, Patriots and Prophet, on page 245 declares, his intellectual greatness distinguishes him above the great men of all ages as a historian, poet, philosopher, general of armies, and legislator, he stands without peer. Moses, who towers head and shoulder. Is this mic going in and going out? Do, do we have a better one? Moses. Moses. Moses, who towers head and shoulders above the greatest warriors and general this earth has ever known. He stands aloft and forthright above Alexander the Great, Attila the Hun, Napoleon Bonaparte, Achilles and Hannibal. He stands skyward and airborne above these men, not merely because he was destined to succeed,
but determined to succeed. When you are determined to succeed, you will care more than other deem is wise. You will risk more than others deduce is safe. You will give more than others believe is required. You will dream more than others conceive is practical. You will sacrifice more than others figure is beneficial. You will do more than others realize is attainable. You will expect more than others suppose is imaginable. And you will get more than others think is possible. Moses, who is determined to succeed, hears a theophany, fierce God, funny voice, the voice of God. And in verse 2, we are told, send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. Moses is commanded by God to send some men on a covert mission of espionage. Verse 3 goes on to say, And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. He's admonished and cautioned not to sin on fledged, pubescent, and young Rudy Poos, but men of experience skill and know-how men who are versed and seasoned men who are oppressed and accomplished tested and tried men who bears the battle scars of life verse 4 through 16 informs us that moses go through a pain staking process of selectivity then with much care and precision he singles out the heads of the tribe from the tribe of reuben who is unstable as water he elected shama from the tribe of simeon one of the instrument of cruelty he selected Safa from judah the lion Whelp, he handpicked eagle from Ephraim to show affection. He chose Oshia, Benjamin, the ravenous wolf. He nominated Palti, Sebulon, a gather of abundance. He named Gadiel, Joseph, that means fruitful. He designated Gadi, then that means backbiter. He assigns Emil. Asher, that means refined and diplomatic. He commissioned Sitha, Naphtali, which means golden town. He delegated Nabi, and from God, which emerges triumphant, he authorized Guil. Twelve leaders are selected. Verses 17 to 20 declare, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountains and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. And what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye not of good be and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. After selecting solidifying and cementing the 12. Moses gives explicit and implicit instruction concerning the mission. It's one of surveillance, it's one of reconnaissance, it's a perilous and 
dangerous mission in those days there were no U no uavs on man aerial vehicle for reconnaissance there were no predator drones no nro national reconnaissance officers which uses satellite to monitor survey and to search for the enemy but they didn't need it they had the Holy Ghost. And I don't know about you. The Holy Ghost is able to detect the enemy. Because the Bible says we will hear a voice behind us that say, walk ye in it. This is the way of the Lord. Moses elicits and solicits their cooperation as their mission will not only take them deep into the enemy's territory and domain, but put their lives at risk as they seek to discover and retrieve information concerning their enemies latitude and longitude topography and geology climate and milieu populace and census nutritions and menu and stockades and barricades the 12 concur and consent to the mission they are fitted with their camouflage guerrilla frocks and outfitted with the accoutrements and contraptions of recognizance the 12 are blessed and most by moses and he deployed them into the hush hush clandestine haba haba mission Verse 21 through 25's report. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Sin and unto Rehov as men come to Hamah. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron uh, where Ahiman, Shishai, and Tamai, the children of Anak, where now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol and cut down thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bear it between two upon a staff. And they brought off the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called Brook Eshcol because the cluster of the grace which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. The Bible says for 40 days. These men scouted, examined, and inspected the land and its people. Those 40 days were not spent in a house, rendezvousing, nor in a church, deja vuing, but roughing it in nature. One of God's books of revelation, inspiration, and motivation. Ellen G. Wife, that is not part of the biblical canon because the biblical canon closed with John the Revelator, but she's part of the trajectory of inspiration. Tells us in her lesser light. Again in Patriots and Prophet that nature speaks to our senses declaring that there is a living God, the creator and the supreme ruler of the universe. When you come to camp meeting is to come and study from God's nature book and find out that the God we serve he is still able to take you from down to up to take you from out to end because he goes before you he goes behind you he goes beneath you he goes around you and he goes in you God did not ordain these men to spend 40 days in nature for the express purpose of scouting, surveying, exploring, and investigating. But for them to become better acquainted with him. Camp meeting is not designed for us just to socialize. Not just for fellowshipping, 
but so that we can become acquainted in the God in whom we move and have our being in the God whose name is holy who is from everlasting to everlasting in that God who said before you call I will answer and while you talking I will hear but if they spent 40 days in nature they had to spend at least five Sabbaths in nature the Sabbath is not only to do personal ministry and lay activities, but it's for us to become acquainted with our Creator. May I just quote you again from the pen of inspiration? Is that all right? Do you still believe in the little lady? I still believe in the little lady. Because Joel chapter 2 tells us that in the last days, they shall dream dreams and they shall see vision. I don't know about you, but she has been conferred in my mind because she passed the prophetic test. Yes, yes, yes. Scholars say that she plagiarized. So what? The laws of plagiarism back then wasn't the same as today. And inspiration is not so much concerned with where you get your material. And if you don't believe me, ask Balaam. He got his from a donkey. Did you get that? She says, the Sabbath ever pointing to him who made them all bids men to open the great book of nature and trace their wisdom, the power, and the love of the creator. Verse 26 through 29. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land with thou sentest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, you need to be careful. Whenever somebody said, nevertheless, <laughs> the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are wall and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. The 12 men surfaced and emerged safely from under the cover of espionage. Exuberance and jubilance run high and unchecked through the camp of Israel. Despise our home. They have no symptoms and sign of sickness, no scratches and cuts of hurts, and no wounds and trauma of suffering. Ten of despise in regiment fashion flank to the left, then uniformly high step forward in platoon formation and with deep bass. Pitch a report which appears to be laudable and meritable, admirable and commendable, praiseworthy and thankworthy. Nevertheless, as they continue 
the momentum switches. They slip and sunk into negativism and skepticism. The report becomes scandalous and treacherous. They reported, listen to me, not what they saw, but their view. Work with that. Because who you are determine the way you see everything. They reported not what they had seen, but what they had believed. Because what you believe determine how you view life. This report had to be rebuffed and rebuttal, denied and denounced, censored and condemned. And I'm glad that there's a man by the name of Caleb, whose name means dog. And we're going to finish with that. Verse 30 says, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. And possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Caleb is overcome with righteous indignation. Having hearing such a calumnious report, he rapidly jets to the front and with gated and gala swagger. A swagger of confidence, a swagger of courage, a swagger of fortitude, a swagger of faith, a swagger of victory. Not because of who he is. He knew that he had liabilities, vulnerabilities, and shortcomings. But he knew who he knew. He knew from whence cometh his help. His help cometh from the Lord. And when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard and thousands shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right side but nothing shall come nigh to thy dwelling as a church when you know that you know that he will never leave you nor forsake you he will not tempt you above that which you can bear and before you can open your mouth the Holy Ghost has answered your prayer. I said, when you know that you can ask and you go receive, you can seek and you go find, you go knock and it shall be open, and nothing shall separate you because we are more than conquerors. I said, when you know that you know that you are called to call another that you are found to find another and you are told to tell another and you are one to win another and you are saved to save another when you know that you have a savior we all can serve a book we all can understand a life we all can live a race we all can run a battle we all can win a faith we all can keep a gospel we all can obey a message we all can share then Lake Region will have a swagger a swagger of spontaneous compassion a swagger of instinctive empathy genuine humility impromptu meekness gratuitous tolerance authentic forgiveness and automatic love caleb stands erect in front of the pack with poise and equilibrium he raises his voice in rhythmic cadence and with melodious reverberation then articulating with ethos and pathos he voices let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome in other words lake region stop murmuring and complaining stop belly aching and griping stop mumbling and grumbling but 
go and tell that there are decisions Lake Region should be making. They are problem Lake Region should be solving. They are possibility Lake Region should be examining. They are project Lake Region should be starting. They are goal Lake Region should be reaching. They are plan Lake Region should be executing. They are opportunities Lake Region should be seizing. They are dream Lake Region should be fulfilling. They are children and youth Lake Region should be educating. They are senior citizen that Lake Region should be assisting. They are teenager that Lake Region should be reclaiming. They are churches that Lake Region needs to edify and beautify. They are new territory that Lake Region needs to be entering. They are debts that Lake Region needs to be canceling. They are resources that Lake Region needs to be gathering. And they are soul that Lake Region needs to be saving. Go and tell. Stop murmuring. Caleb said, Caleb was a man of vision. When you are visionary, you will see opportunities where others, sees, where others see obstacles. Stepping stones where others see stumbling blocks. Victories where others see defeat. You will hold on where others are letting go. You will keep on where others are giving up. And president, you will succeed where others have failed. When you have a vision, the vision will not only empower you, it will expand you. It will not only stabilize you, but it will stretch you. It will not only propel you, but it will prioritize you. It will not only motivate you, but it will also mobilize you. It will not only give you leverage, but it will lead you. Where there is no vision, my people perish. People like Caleb who have a vision understand these three facts. Faith is the daring of the soul. To go beyond what it can see. Action may not always bring success, but there's no success without action. And number three, even if you are on the right track, you will get run over if you just sit there. People with vision, they have a purpose. People without vision, they have wishes. Caleb said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. They said this was the evangelistic hour. In other words, Caleb is saying, Lake Region, the day is far spent. The night is coming. When no man will be able to work. Church, we are not living in borrowed time. We are living in past due time. We are not living in the toes of Daniel chapter 2. We are living in the toenail. Do you know that the two beasts of Revelation 13, the one which comes out of the water and the other which comes out of the earth, the two last days religious political power are actively working together, setting the stage to abolish civil and religious liberty? Do you know that the wall between church and state is almost gone? But you think that I'm just doing tongue and cheek. May I quote you something? The late Judge Rehnquist, the former Supreme Court Justice said, and I quote, the wall between church and state is a meaningless metaphor. But if that's not enough, 
May I quote you another statement from the Supreme Justice? It says, accommodation of diverse religious minority is a luxury we can no longer afford. And if you follow the trend of the Supreme Court, and by the way, the Supreme Court, let me help give you a little last day message event. It's just like the paper say. Let me help you with that. You see, the papacy says he's infallible, not because he doesn't make mistakes, but whatever the Pope says when he speaks ex cathedra or sit in the chairs of Peter is irreversible. The decision of the Supreme Court are irreversible. Are you with me? And they are starting to say they don't see no need for seven-day Adventists. The night is far spent. Can I quote you just one more of the little lady? In the book Maranatha, page 193, she said, When our nations in its legislative council shall enact laws to bind the conscience of men in regard to the religious privilege enforcing Sunday observance and bring oppressive power to bear against those who keep the seven day Sabbath the law of God will to all intents and purposes be made void in our land and national apostasy will be followed by national ruin beloved we are living in the last days. Let me rush on. Caleb stands up. And in other words, he asks him, why are you quivering and shivering? Why are you fearful? Do you think for a moment that God was impressed with their sizes, statues, weight, span, body fat, and masses? Do you think that God is, is scurrying and recoiling into a secret chambers? Beloved, I say this kindly. Our church has reached to the point where we are afraid to blow the trumpet. We have become more money hungry than message driven. And most of our members, pastors, and leaders are afraid to preach the three angel message. They don't want to hurt nobody's feeling. Yes. We do not have the right to hurt people feeling deliberately, but neither do we have the right to hold back and hide the truth from them intentionally. Are you with me still? Beloved, the truth takes precedence over feeling as long as we preach it in love and diplomacy and if I had time I will tell you what love is love is understanding that what we know today those who we preach to may know it tomorrow if we do it in mercy number two I will tell you what tack is tack is lighting a fire under people's feet without boiling their blood and then I will tell you what diplomacy is. Is making your point without making an enemy. Preachers, if we're going to preach the gospel, we have to learn to preach it in love. We have to learn to preach it in tact and with diplomacy. Because truth without mercy is cruelty. Caleb says, let us go up and take it at once because the taller they are, the harder they fall, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. 
But Caleb had something. If you read the Bible that the other thing didn't have except Joshua, the Bible says he was of a different spirit. And can I make this parallel with the words of Muhammad Ali, the greatest, that says champions are not made in the gym. Champions are made from something that, ha that they have deep inside, a desire, a dream, a vision. They have to have last minute stamina. They have to have be a little faster. They have to have the skills and the will, but the will must be stronger than the skills. Help me, Holy Ghost. Caleb will was stronger than his skills. If we are going to burn like Caleb, who when was 85 years said, give me the mountains where the Anakins dwell. In other words, give me the challenge. Then I submit to this cadre of believers, to this august assembly, that Lake Region must accept the challenge to evangelize the five states that God has entrusted to us. And if we gonna do it, we got to pull together rather than pull apart. We got to understand that we cannot solve today's and tomorrow problems with yesterday tools. And great vision precedes great achievement. Working together precedes winning together. And if we get along, others will come along. And if we go to change Lake Region, let me submit to you with respect but forthrightness that the first person we need to change is ourselves. In conclusion, verses 31 through 33 says, But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants, therefore, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. They made excuses. Today, we have become a church that make excuses when it commands to appropriate budget for evangelism. We as a people, we count it as an expense rather than an investment. I do that slowly. We are well in counting the costs to evangelize but very poor in estimating its value. The church and the conference which does not evangelize has placed their death on a layaway plan. Caleb said, who name means dog? Leroy. Play me the piano, you know how we do this. The name Caleb means dog, and I will not use it in the derogatory term, but I will use it as the young black in the urban and non-urban cities use it. They use it as a slang. When they want to refer to their best friend, they say, that's my dog. Are you with me? Caleb means dog. Caleb was God's best friend. When you become God's best friend, you will understand that success 
is not mystical. You don't have to search for it. Success is not productivity. You, do not, you don't have to work for it. Success is not opportunity. You don't have to wait for it. Success is not a leverage, so you don't have to power up for it. Success is not an office, so you don't have to lobby for it. Success is not position, so you don't have to politic for it. Success is not impossible, so you don't have to shy away from it. And success is not a monopoly. You don't have to control it. But success is partnering with God and developing two C's, character and competence. And when we develop character and competence, we will go the extra mile. We will produce regardless of the situation and we will get the job done. Caleb said, we can possess it at once. Go and tell that when you give God your best, he will always return the favor. Amen. Amen.